uh, information to that I believe is important uh, described in Revelation 10 and Revelation 12 verse 4 which I believe is the sixth seal and this would occur within a three and a half year period after the tribulation starts so about four years from now all of this should be um, completed it which is pretty somber but Anywho, I know a lot of people describe these as natural events in these verses, and I'll go over them, but I believe that they are actually nuclear warheads and nuclear uh, war events. So so in Revelation 10, verses 1 through 3, it talks of the mighty angel, angel with the little foot, and it says, I saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was on his head, his face was like the sun, and his feet like pillars of fire. He had a little book open in his hand, and he set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land, and cried with a loud voice as when a lion roars. When he cried out, seven thunders uttered their voices. So I work for the military, and I know a little bit about ICBMs and um MRVs, which are multiple re-entry vehicles, and it sounded more, instead of a natural event, a natural catastrophic event, it sounded more like a nuclear uh, war or warhead sequence, uh, which you have one through six, which is the mighty angel coming down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, rainbow was upon his head, his face was uh, as it were the sun, his feet as pillars of fire, it says feet plural, not, um, not foot, and crying with a loud voice as a lion's roar. And that's very reminiscent of a launch and a missile re-entry. And then seven through nine, uh, in his hand, a little book opens, uh, sets his right feet upon the sea and his left foot, uh, left foot, right foot upon the sea and his left foot upon the earth. That's a uh, like multi, uh, release of multiple uh, nuclear payloads or a singular one. And then the seven thunders in uh, number 10 uttered their voices. That's pretty much multiple detonations, in this case, seven detonations. And so with the boosters, that's like the his feet are pillars of fire. And then there you, you see that right there, clothed with a cloud, face like the sun, it gets a whole bunch of thermal heating so with that thermal heating you get this yellowish glow or a very bright high temperature like reminiscent of the sun and then in his hand a little book opens and so i found this picture and it's identical to what it looks like before um, re-entry when uh, the sublip bombs or singular uh, warhead is coming back for re-entry so and then the rainbow on his head, I didn't find any for uh, a nuclear missile, but these two really give a good idea of the shockwave profiles. On the right here is one for a fighter. You see the different um, density shockwaves. And so it's kind of like a rainbow with the different striated bows. And then over here is another uh, tip profile, again, showing the prominent outer uh, shockwave Band and then the inner ones. And so I think that's what John the Revelator saw when he was describing the rainbow on his head, and it's the shockwave profile. And then here's the loud voice like a lion's roar. Um, and that's exactly what it's doing. say almost 2,000 years ago when John saw this vision uh, that's a pretty good description for someone not knowing what it was and describing it uh, in his day and then uh, for nukes the seven thunders one nuke can carry uh, multiple nuclear bomblets in this case it shows seven or it could be seven individual uh, nuclear uh, bombs re-entering. Either way, it's pretty uh, sobering. So 
And then the seven thunders, those are the seven detonations uh, that uttered their voices. And on the upper left, you see, you know, lightning with seven thunders. And then over here, the peacekeeper, uh, which is a multiple re-entry vehicle, which has eight um, re-entry vehicles. You see the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight that are entering uh, into the atmosphere to the earth. And uh, so you would see something just like he described. And then the six seal, I believe that this will happen. Six seals or seven seals rather are within the first three and a half years of the tribulation with um, so that I believe it's describing nuclear war and not uh, an unnatural again not a natural catastrophic event and it says here in Revelation 6 for the sixth seal I looked I looked when he opened the sixth seal and behold there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sacked cloth of hair and the moon became like blood and the stars of heaven fell to earth as a fig tree drops its late figs when it's shaken with by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves in the rocks of the mountains. So. That sounds like to me, especially with the scroll rolling up in the, the great earthquake, the mountains being moved out of its place, people hiding in caves and rocks, and the mountains, that sounds like a nuclear detonation. So, and then here we have it right here. Star falls to heaven, great earthquake, sun and moon darkened, sky rolled up like a scroll, and men hid in the caves or bunkers. And here it is rolling up like a scroll. And then the shock wave comes, and that's the great earthquake. And I think that's a pretty good description that John gave of the six seals. And um, so uh, pretty uh, sobering. And then in Revelation 12, verses 4, which is talking about previously with Satan um, and the one third of the angels falling down. But I think it's in this case applicable because it comes after the sign of the woman. His tail th drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. We have almost 15,000 nukes worldwide. Uh, 14,923 is what they have recorded. 7,000 from Russia, 6,800 in the USA. And the rest of the world combined only has 1,123. And if you take one third of the stars thrown to the earth during the sixth seal, that's basically 5,000 nukes. And only the US and Russia has this capability. So that might give you an indicator as to uh, either a nuclear exchange between these two countries or one side or the other. But this is what is surmise to happen in the sixth seal. And so what would be the aftermath of 5,000 nukes? Well, there has been tons of studies that have been done since uh, we dropped nuclear bombs on uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Um, and it shows that if we were to exchange, and this is a full out exchange, of 5,000 one kiloton nukes were exchanged, it would result in an estimation of 1.1 billion deaths. Um, how, however, we use higher yields with our nuclear bombs, so that's actually would be on the low end on the number of deaths that would occur. And not only that, 5,001 kiloton nukes would eject 220 million metric tons of black carbon or soot into the atmosphere, and that's equivalent to about 13 volcanoes uh, erupting at the same time. And the immediate result of that uh, it would initiate the nuclear winter and the ice age, and the Earth's surface temperature would drop by at least 15 uh, degrees uh, Fahrenheit, if not more. And then that would result in the agricultural growing season reduced to less than 20% of the normal time. So we're talking about taking out 
80% of our natural growing time for plants to try and produce food. Uh, would have much less light hitting uh, the earth, the lower temperature, and in some regions, uh, it would no longer be able to grow food. And on top of that, to add uh, insult to injury, uh, the rainfall would be reduced by more than 40%. That's a, that's a tremendous amount. So with the seals talking about uh, famine and death in Hades or hell, um, I can see that being the result of this, uh, of this situation. And then not only that, um, if you inter inject that much black soot into the stratosphere, that black soot would absorb all the uh, sun hitting it, and so it would raise the stratosphere temperature and would actually erode the ozone and uh, create other climate changes. So when it talks about the sun becoming black as sackcloth and the moon being as blood, that's due to all that particulate matter or soot that's just circulating in the upper atmosphere. And then before the day of the Lord, in Joel 2, uh, verses 30 through 32, I won't read this, but it says, blood and fire and pillars of smoke, sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood once again. And this is before the great and awesome day of the Lord, uh, the sixth seal, in other words. And um, I believe when he says blood and fire and pillars of smoke, I think that means that there's going to be a lot of lives that are lost. But it's important to note in that last uh, part of Joel's verse here that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's very important to keep that in the back of your head and always have that with you. This comes to pass, then you're alive. So that concludes my presentation, and I hope this has been informative, and maybe we'll get you prepared for the coming days and get you in the correct place with the Lord, and there you go. Have a blessed day. Thank you.